Good morning, guys. It's a new day on site. I've um, got a busy one. Looking smart. Very nice indeed. So these are cut nicely at an angle rather than just putting it. For my uh, impact a bit. It's very magnetic on the end. Stud work is now completed down here. You can see that I've left a section out up here. The reason for that is because we're gonna drop our four inch pipe down and across through here. So I don't wanna stud any of this out yet until everything is in place where we need it to be. That way then I can stud around it and make all the framework just to basically disguise it in this bit, bit of a bulkhead here. Uh, next up, what I'm gonna do is get this mesh, this plaster of lath on the underside of this staircase. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use some roofing felt there, some membrane, and put that on here first and then I'm gonna put the mesh over the top of that. The reason being, if you've ever used this stuff, it's great, but if you're doing something overhead, actually trying to get the bond in to stick into it is a bit of a nightmare. So if you put that on the back first, and then you go over this, it then gives the bond in something to stick to, so you can push it through and it's less likely to fall out in your face, because nobody likes plaster in their face. So yeah, that is my next process. The guys up here are smashing through this. Hi Pete. Oh, hi, John. Uh, uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't too staged, was it? Oh, oh hi, John. Fun to meet you here. So, yeah, you can see now Pete's got this frame in. The steel is all boxed in nicely with our fireboard. We're also going to go over the flat of this with fireboard as well. And then, obviously, our insulated board will go over the top of that. So, this is going to look very nice. Very nice job, Pete. Very nice. Next up. We've got this bit to do in here, which will be exactly the same as in there. Just follow that line through basically and repeat the process. So yeah, that is progress so far. So you can see what I'm talking about now. So I've got my roof and foul underneath my plasterers lath here. It's all pinned down the sides. And then I have managed to get some tiny little screws that I've got into the bottom of the tread, the underside, just to hold the middles in. And then what you need to do then is just use some wire. You can see down here. So you just get some wire in between and then basically hook it round, twist it tight, and then that holds this all nicely in then. So you can see now it's started to form the shape really well in here. Yeah, and that just runs up and that's going to look really nice and effective. I'm going to get a little bit more in here, but I'm going to leave a fair bit up there because like I mentioned, we've got our four inch pipe to come across up here and down, so it might be in the way. So I'm just going to sort of do a little bit more here and then that's it. I'll just leave that for now. You could board it, but it'd be an absolute nightmare and trying to actually get that shape of bonding with board there is going to be a right mission. So this is the best, most easiest way. But like you can see, once the bonding goes through there, it's actually got something to latch onto. It's not just pushing straight through so it makes life easier basically you don't get it all in your face so that is a little handy hint for you there if you're ever doing something like this just use a bit of roofing felt and you're good to go we have got everything done that we need to get done we're now ready for the sparkies and the plumbers who are coming on monday so we've got our stud wall up across here we're gonna have the kitchen units now that are gonna run across there and then across there and then there's obviously gonna be a doorway into here which will be storage inside there the bathroom is as we said before shower over here basin and toilet there there's gonna be a little niche in here as well so we need to stud this out to carry the tray and we're gonna put in two little bits so basically shelving for shampoo that sort of stuff in there we've also dropped the ceiling slightly here just to get some spotlights in across there and also extraction so that will be all good in here Good morning guys, it's Monday and everybody's ready and raring to go. We've got the plumbers in. Yeah. Oh, look at that, Joe is excited to be here. So today we've got the plumbers in, like I said, and hopefully the spark is gonna turn up as well. They should be here so they can start getting their first fix done. Morning, Pete. Morning, how you doing? Good, mate, good. So Pete is just getting this wall battened, so we're gonna use elements board in here, across here and across there as well. We've also got a few little bits of insulation to wrap up and then we can start with the tape. We're obviously going to use Pete's special hack with the tape with a little roll thing. You yeah, must have yeah, seen yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Patent pending. Patent pending. There are going to be some bits we're going to have to leave. <laughs> There are going to be some bits we're going to have to leave to just to make sure that Sparkers can get their relevant cables up because we don't want to be taping it and then taking it down. So we're just going to go through now the uh, layout with the clients just to make sure they're happy with all the sockets and the lighting and then we can crack on.
So, Peter's finished now, getting the battening on, like you can see in here. He's now gonna move out here and get the door lining in here. So obviously, it's a bit, bit of a smaller door because we've got the ceiling to worry about. So it's just a standard lining that's gonna go in there, but obviously be chopped down to height. And then we're gonna get Paul Shields to make up a door, which will match the rest of the doors in here. Also, what's gonna happen up here on this corner, just to give a bit of a nod to the main house, we're gonna put a 45 degree angle on this corner with a nice little scallop at the top and bottom, just to basically soften this corner and just like I say, just to mirror what's in the house really. So that's gonna have to now be just doubled up here just to allow for it, because we've got an 80 mil width on the 45 across here. So we'll have to just whip some of these noggins out and then beef this up just to make, basically take the actual width of this corner. Downstairs, plumbers are making good headway. So we're using main core in here and in the main house. It's just absolutely bulletproof system, guaranteed for I don't know how long, possibly a million years. I'm not sure, it's guaranteed for a long time. They're getting all that in. Joe is smashing through the batting in in the toilet. We've had a little bit of a change of plan in the toilet as well now. The toilet's gonna be there. Um, we're going to have a basin over here but what we're going to do to maximize space in here is basically now put a wall hung toilet on there so what it does mean is i've got to adjust this stud work at the back to obviously accommodate the cage in there so i'm going to get on that now and then the door is going to open out and this way just so it's not too cramped in there i'm going to have a nice little basin on the side there and that is about it in that room so let's crack on See the bit that I've cut now, how that's going to work. It's just going to sit in there, you can see how badly this pillar is out. So that will obviously be fixed back to the wall like that. And then that's going to work nicely, it needs to pick out a little bit at the top there, but I can work with that. That is good. And then once that's in, like I said, I'm going to build a ladder frame here. So basically two bits of timber, the timber's coming across, can be fixed into the wall there, and then that will sit out here and then I can fix through my legs that come across as well to hold everything nice and solid and then the board can then just carry straight across from this point to that point jobs are good in good morning guys it's a new day on site and um, we've got a busy one the plumbers are back in the house they are continuing with their wonderful work aren't you guys yeah. oh yeah yeah man. slowly but surely they're becoming more sexy what, more sexy on camera yeah that's it <laughs> so Joe's cracking on in there, getting that finished up. The guys here, we're just obviously finishing the plumbing. Uh, then we've got the insulation to carry on with in the ceilings. Upstairs, we're going to carry on with the batting in. We've got all the plasterboard coming today, so we can carry on with the batting in through this area. Morning, Pete. Morning. Sorted, Pete is cracking on with this corner detail here, which is looking smart, very nice indeed. So obviously what that does, once it's all plastered, it just softens this corner nicely, and it's just basically replicating the detail that we've got in the main house. So that is looking nice, Pete, nice. Yeah, yeah. weren't too bad, was it? Nah. <laughs> got there mate, you got there. We've basically taken order of a lot of plasterboards. They're all in there now, ready to go on the walls and the ceilings once the sparkers have finished their first fix. We have got this bit of boxing in sorted here. So this is gonna be the little niche in here that I was talking about. So there's gonna be a nice glass shelf in the middle and then they can get their shampoo and stuff in there. So I'm gonna crack on with the uh, elements board in here. Pete is just getting all these bits of insulation wrapped up, getting this closed off around this window as well. Some more buttoning's been done down here. Hi guys. Hello. hello, hello, hello. The plumbers are busy getting all their first fix in. We've got a cage in there for our wall and the toilet. Right, Joe is just currently propping this steel up because what we're gonna do here is basically remove 
the broken bricks out of this. And then we're gonna to have to extend this pillar out slightly because we're putting a sliding door, which is gonna go across this opening here. Currently we're, we're back, well, we're over here somewhere. So we need to make sure we've obviously got something to fix our pocket door too. So we're gonna be bringing this out slightly. So probably around here. So we need to make preparations in this wall for obviously new bricks and then to build this out. So Joe's getting that finished up now and he's gonna get this all stitched drilled out. So yeah, that's, that's it. That's the update for the morning. Let's crack on and do some work. First of all, the niche is done. So you can see in here, this has all been elements boarded. Obviously we need to get our tape on all these edges and these internal corners. Uh, but that just gives a nice little area there. We've got a shelf in the middle and you can get all your shampoo and shower gel and all that in there. I will do this extra board here. Once the ceiling's been boarded, so we can actually cast the plaster board right the way through. So that's why we've left this down like this. Uh, and then I'll complete that once the ceiling's on. Next up, as Pete's been doing out here with these battens, I'm gonna carry on with the battening in here and get all these on. Just another job to wipe off the hit list. Right then, next up, I'm gonna be in the cupboard, the cupboard of doom. I'm basically gonna put a false ceiling in here. Two reasons for that. First of all, we've got this nice four inch pipe in here. Secondly, nobody is that tall that they need more than this ceiling height in a cupboard. And did I say two reasons? Three reasons, I've just thought of another one. It's gonna make my life a lot easier with plastering this because we can then literally just come up from here and then flatten this out across here. So it's not that I'm lazy, it just makes life easier and it's just gonna be a nicer finish. Just trying to get around here and then with this being boxed in, it's just gonna be really awkward and look a bit fussy. So it's just much nicer if we can just flatten this off here. It's just gonna be loft space anyway, so we might as well blank it off and just finish it off nicely. So you can see I've cast my laser line around here now. That means I can sit my timbers on top of here and then that enables me then to get an architrave on the inside here perfectly well. And then I can just run some timbers across here. I'm just gonna use some two by two, brace that straight across and then I can get that boarded and just run this straight into the boarding and we're good to go. Joe is continuing with the insulation. Like I mentioned before, we've got two layers of 50 mil, so we've got 100 mil. Before you say, why don't we just use 100 mil? We have layers of 50 mil, so it just made sense to use the 50 mil rather than returning it, getting 100 mil, blah, blah, blah. And also, we can just get all the first fix done underneath the insulation. And then we're gonna be putting 100 mil of rock wall sound insulation as well in there. And then obviously fireboard over the top. Can you explain what you're doing here, Pete? Basically, uh, we've got a box service uh, waste pipe in, so we're just going to have uh, an angle detail here. Quite so, so all I've done is I've just uh, rammed my baton as close as I can to the waste pipe. We've had to go parallel to the uh, closest point we can get. Now to set it out, what I always do, I always get an off cut baton and then just hold it up. And then uh, as, I, as I got you, got you to do earlier, just eye it through. And it's just a really nice, easy, simple way of making sure that you're going to be able to get your framework in with that as close as you can. Obviously that's very important because we don't want the thing to be uh, protruding down farther than it needs to be. So uh, this is just a nice easy way of plotting out where your frame's going to end up. So what I'll, what I'll do is I'll put my mark there, laser level across that or and uh, get my bottom rail in and then uh, just cut my angles and a uh, nice simple job. I've made sure that I'm nice and parallel both ends and because I'm going to laser it, hopefully, well, I know it's going to work. Not hopefully, Pete. It's, uh, it will definitely. Yeah, for, first time every time. Yes. Uh, I'll be able to uh, cut all my buttons all equal, just make a pattern, cut probably seven or eight of them and it'll just be a nice quick job, nice neat job as well. So They'll all drop in nice and easily, won't they? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Best laid plans and all that. Exactly. Sorted, mate. Nice one. Right, so the framework is in for the ceiling. Uh, we just had a discussion and we believe there's gonna need to be a light in here. So I'm just gonna get this plaster boarded, but I won't for now, I'm gonna leave that as is. 
So I can just obviously pass the board, it's flat here, and then I'll carry on with my plasters back up to this, and then that can be rolled in nicely. So next step, what I'm gonna do is drop onto this. So basically what we need to do is ply this wall out. And the reason for that is, because it's all in the toilet, and as the name suggests, the toilet is hung on the wall, you're relying on these two bars here, and obviously the toilet, the actual pan sitting flat against this framework. So if you just put plasterboard over it, it can tend to flex a little bit, and it can be a bit of a wobble when you sit down. Obviously it's not gonna go anywhere, but it's just not great when it moves a little bit. So what we do to remedy that is put some ply on. So we'll completely ply this wall, and it makes it just that little bit more solid, so it feels a bit more robust when you sit on the toilet, because the last thing you wanna do is feel like you're sitting on it, and it's about to drop off the wall. What I'm gonna do now is get cut around this flush plate, get cut around the bolt holes and the waist hole, and all that sort of stuff. So get that all mapped onto this board, and then get it stuck in place, and then we're good to go. Right, so you can see now I've got all my uprights marked out and what that denotes is the edges of the push plate and these two bars and I've also got my centre line which is obviously where these two pipes come through here. That's all marked out on here. So now what I need to do is obviously work out my horizontal points so that I can get my centres for everything. So I've just got this lateral strap here, stuck it to the stud and then I'm going to use my laser put it to where I need it to be and then I can measure it because my base, this here is going to be the floor level so that's where the ply will sit and just measure it from that to the laser line and that will give me my centre points on here then so then I can just mark straight up I can use some hole saws to get all the relevant holes cut and then obviously a jigsaw to get this fresh plate cut out and then this will be good to go on. Right, so now I've got all my markings. I'm not sure you can see from the light, but I've got all my horizontals here. I've marked around where my flush plate's gonna be. So now all I need to do is just basically get these cut out and it will just fit straight on. First time, no, no readjustment needed. Good morning guys, welcome to another day on site. From what it looks like, the Sparkies have finished their first fix. So everything is ready in what will be the downstairs toilet. Plumbers are finished, got a patches in, got plumbing in for the sink. Got a socket on out here, socket on there as well. We've also got the light installed in the cupboard. Liam has finished doing his brickwork. In fact, to bring this wall out here just to take the pocket door. So he's done a good job of that. That's all bricked in nicely now. That'll just be painted in with everything else. Battening is now finished all the way around. We've still got a bit of battening to do here, but we need to sort out this window thing here. Upstairs is all good. It looks like first fix is done, apart from some lighting which needs to go here, so we'll have to have a word about that. In here, the tray is down, so we can get these boards back on, get all this sorted in here, and we can crack on with this. And the guys have been busy starting to get the plasterboard on the ceilings in here. Morning, Pete. Morning. Hi. Hi. So what you can see over there, if you remember from the start of this little project, uh, these walls were very considerably out. There's a massive bow in the wall, which obviously is going to affect the ceiling line like that, you can see. So we're going to have to come up with some sort of remedy to either bond this out, to straighten this out a bit, or we'll leave it as a character curve. It's an old property, isn't it? So we'll see. Right, as you know, we've got our insulation in here and we're also using insulated plasterboard over the top. You can see B and Joe have already done these, so these are cut nicely at an angle rather than just putting it. Obviously we're putting a joint here because they're a flat joint, but we have got this angle to deal with here. So all we're doing is just getting a bevel to get our angle just like that and then marking it on the board and then just cutting that straight through and that just gives a nice finish then. These are going to be rounded off, so we'll bond these out and then it will be skimmed, so it's just a nice round on the top here on this detail, just to finish it off nicely. It just looks better than a, a nice sharp line, because obviously it's an older property, and that is how they would have done it. It would have been rounded out rather than straight. So all the board is marked up now. I've just got to get my angle marked on the side of it, trim that off in there, and then this one can be stuck up. You notice as well that we're using these little washers. 
These are a galvanised washer with obviously uh, drywall screws in there as well. The reason we use these rather than just screwing is because you've got this thickness of insulation on the back of the plasterboard, if you just screw into it, it's quite easy for these to come loose and wobble slightly. So by using these washers, these are actually the washers that we use on our elements board. It just holds it much firmer and just makes sure there's never any movement because obviously if there's movement on a plasterboard, it's going to cause cracks. So we don't want that. We just tape straight over these and then skim straight over them and they're good to go. Right guys, that's it for today. We've got the ceiling completed in here. There's just one little bit to go in there. You can see now what I mean about the boards flying through across this wall. Just gives us a complete envelope then of insulation everywhere and we can just brick everything right up to that then and then that can just be plastered up too because this wall's being left exposed if you remember. These cables we put now in a nice conduit down to the, uh, the light switch over here. So that is all good in here and then out here. We started getting our pink board across like you've seen. We don't want to go any further yet. We are going to have to set up a platform out here so we can just do all that in one hit. When we've got our disc for our wall as well, we just do it all. Foil tape is pretty much all done. There's just a little bit to do over there. Finish the ceiling in here as well. So this ceiling's all done nicely. Just got to get some moisture resistant board on these two walls here. And then this wall again, it's going to be the discs and our insulated board on there as well with our vapor barrier across the back. I can start getting this area tanked and ready for Greg when he comes. Need to get this floor ordered as well because there's going to be electric underfloor heating in here. So we need to get on Schluter and get some cable and matting sorted for in here. Spark has already made provisions down there ready for it, so that is all good. So guys, it's a new day on site and we're ready and we're wearing, wearing, rare, ready and raring to go. I'm gonna start insulating in here, which is always a lovely job, and then get on with the moisture resistant plasterboard in here. We're just gonna try and rip through all the plasterboard in as much as possible, and then get rid of all this lot onto the walls, which will be nice, so. Let's do it. Right, so all the moisture board is on in here. You can see as well that I've boarded these reveals. I haven't gone crazy. This is because obviously we're having our sliding door in here. It's like a barn style door which will slide across, so these need to be plastered, as you will see them, there's no lining going in here. So now what I'm gonna do is drop onto the tanking. You've seen me use this stuff before, so I won't go too much into it, but it's really good stuff, really easy. Just literally paint the glue, which is there, the Pro Seal, paint that on, and then stick everything on. I'm gonna use a squeegee as well, which is basically a silicon tool, like this. And you can just literally run that over the tape, and then that just makes sure it's nice and flat, and then you paint the seal over the top of that then as well just to make sure it's fully waterproof. Right, so I'm doing a little niche now and I'm gonna use these internal corners. They just make life really, really easy. All we're gonna do is basically put our adhesive in. I'll do it in this side as you can probably see. And then that gets stuck in there like that. And then you bring obviously corner strips down to there and across. And I'll just repeat this in all four corners in here. And then obviously I can just put my normal strip, which is over there. I can put that in to join everything up and then that'll be all nicely done. We'll also use these on the tray as well, on the two internal corners down here and down here. So just get some of our glue. Plenty of it in there. I do like this stuff. We used to use the MP water guard system, which is a great system, but it can be quite time consuming to, to install. This is easy. Bulletproof stuff as well, really good, really quick. So that's in there like that. And literally just pop this in, push it right in the corner like so. It's always a good idea to wear gloves with this stuff as well, because it gets on your skin, it's a bit of a nightmare. Let's get our little silicon tool, which is a, this is John's top tip. Get that in there. Squidge it down, nice and easy. You can use a, a roller as well for this, you know, like the really firm plastic rollers, something like that. All this does is just make sure we're nice and tight back and there's no bubbles anywhere or anything like that. You can see it's dark enough. That means the adhesive is working through, which is what you want. It gives you that proper waterproof seal. Nice and snug in there, that's all good. I'm happy with that. That bit down. 
bit more adhesive over the top just to complete the seal. And that's it, just like that. So then I just repeat this process, like I say, in all the corners all the way around, and then I'll come back then and show you getting the internal corners on with the tape. Right, so I've got my internal corners all done, they're all in now, and I've got my strips cut. So I've got two here for the bottom and the top, and I've got two longer pieces there which will do my vertical corners as well. This stuff has obviously got an inside and an outside, so this will go internally to form the seal, and then you paint the glue, the adhesive, over the top like that once it's in. But again, same with the corners, just paint the glue in. Plenty of glue on there. Obviously you want to make sure you overlap as well, you don't just cut this tape to the edge of your, your corners. So that goes in like so. Okay, and then obviously you want to try and get it equally, so we've got half there, half there. Brushing it out, make sure there's no air bubbles underneath so it's a nice flat surface for the tiler to go straight onto. We want to give Greg a nice easy job, don't we? That's it. You can see it's seeping through now, so that's good. That means it's fully in there. Just use that again, tight into the corner. That's it. Bit more glue. And that is it, simple as that. So now I've just got to repeat that in all these corners. And this is then watertight. Good morning guys, it is Monday, we're back and ready and raring to go for another exciting week. I am going to be starting on this pocket door. So we're using the Eccles system that we always use. It's going to be going across here obviously to blank off what will be the garage area to the upstairs. We're going to have a nice sliding door in there, so it's over there, standing up in the corner. I'm going to get it all set up, get it in place, get some sud work built around it and then that's just another job off the hit list, we can get that all plasterboarded then and encased in, ready to rock and roll. So that's it, the system is all put together nicely. I wasn't gonna do an intricate video on this because Pete's already done one. He's done a very thorough video on how to do this. If you wanna watch that, click the link up there and you can see exactly how this goes together with this nice step-by-step -step guide of the full-on installation of this. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna take some measurements of the overall height and width and then I'm gonna build some stud work because obviously this isn't gonna go right to the ceiling so I'm gonna bring some stud work down and up the side as well and then this can just be nicely slotted straight into there then fixed up where it needs to be and we are good to go. Right, so I've got my laser set up now which will define where I fix the start of my stud work. So obviously the pocket door is gonna sit against the string of the staircase and then I need to build the stud around and across the top as well just to obviously hold everything in place. So I've used Pete's nice DeWalt laser, got that set up, so now that shows me exactly where this top plate needs to go and I can build a lot of frame off that. It will bring me down to the height of the pocket door and then obviously I need to put a timber there against the wall there and then I'll basically sit the pocket door system against that existing stud work there and that's pretty much it. Obviously just get it all leveled up and squared up and make sure that we're good to go. What I'm just going to quickly show you is this. You know we like our tools and we like to pay for quality tools rather than just getting cheap stuff because in my opinion the cheap stuff doesn't tend to last as good one thing that we do 
get through a lot of our posi bits. PZ2 bits to be precise, they're the main ones for the main screws that we use. And I've took the, the plunge and bought some of these Weera impactor bits. It was quite expensive, I think I paid about 30 quid for the bit holder. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven PZ2 and two PZ3 bits. I haven't really used them for that long to give like a proper recommendation or show you, tell you how good they are, but so far so good. Uh, the This actual bit holder is designed for use in an impact driver because obviously the way an impact driver works, the force that the bit is put under, this sort of takes some of that force away and obviously extends the lifetime of the bits. Uh, they're also supposed to have diamonds in the top to make it harder and make them less likely to break apparently they grip the screw better so they don't just shear out and then that's what causes the bits to break basically so i'm using these i'll be able to let you know in a week or so see how long this one bit lasts because normally they don't last that long to be honest the ones that you get in the packets that are free they don't last that long they probably last the box of screws if that haven't had much luck with many of the ones we've got some milwaukee impactor ones they were all right but not great so yeah i'll give these a go and see how we get on but yeah now i'm just gonna crack on with the stud work and then i can get that pocket door in and then that is another job off the hit list. So one thing I didn't mention earlier about my uh, impact a bit was quite an important thing, which is also an awesome thing. Obviously when you're boarding ceilings or you're doing stud work like this and you've got to work overhead, it's always a bit of a nightmare relying on the magnetic bit to actually hold the screw for you because it has a tendency just to do that. Whereas this one has got a nice little feature where you just pull this out like that and then it's very magnetic on the end so it holds it like that. And then just as a demonstration as to how strong it is, it's strong enough so you can have it on your pouch with the screw in and then you can easily just hold it above your head. That just pops out so you can see then that you're in where you need to be, you've gone far enough so you don't keep driving it in. Definitely is worth having one of these in your arsenal, makes your life a bit easier. And we all like an easy life don't we? So that's it, the pocket door is in. You can see basically how this is gonna work now. So the entrance way will be through there and the door will just slide across <clears throat> and be hidden in there. You can easily then gain access up the stairs. Uh, this wheel will be fireboarded. Obviously just to make sure we've got a nice fire blanket here to prevent anything going upstairs because this is gonna be a garage down here. So just a bit of extra protection really. Joe is just getting on with insulation and Pete has started boarding underneath the stairs. We're using moisture board down here because, like I mentioned, it is a garage. We've got no damp under this floor. It's just the old concrete floor in here. So we're going to use moisture board. There's also going to be no heating either. So we want to make sure that everything is as protected as possible. So that's just the best way. Use a bit of moisture board. Makes life easier. What we'll do next then is start getting this next layer of insulation in here. And then this can all be boarded. We can get this whole ceiling done all the way through. And then we're all covered up nicely. And then crack on with the walls. 